Hi, I'm Olga Golko. And I'm Adrian Kent. We've made this short introduction to our work on a problem in geometry we call the grasshopper problem. To understand the question, imagine you're given a bag of seeds so that you can plant a lawn of fixed area, let's say equal to 1, and of any shape you like. A grasshopper lands on a random point of this lawn. It then makes one jump of length d in a random direction. For example, if this is its starting point, a jump of this particular length can bring it to any of the points on the dashed circle. All these points are again on the lawn. But if the grasshopper started out here, closer to the boundary, there's a chance that the same jump will bring it outside of the lawn. The question now is, what shape should your lawn be to maximize the probability that the grasshopper stays on the lawn after jumping? This sounds like quite a simple question. However, it turns out to be surprisingly complicated. For example, you might think that, at least for small jumps, a round lawn would be the best choice. But in our paper, we prove analytically that a round lawn is never best, even for very small jumps. Instead, the optimal shapes for small jumps look something like this. We found this solution numerically by mapping the grasshopper problem to a system of atoms on a grid. We then looked for the lowest energy state using simulated annealing and parallel tempering methods, which mimic the way metals are treated by heating and cooling. Here is an example of a simulated annealing run. The system approaches the best shape as we cool it. For sufficiently small jump length, the optimal lawns appear to be shaped like cogwheels. The number of cogs goes down with increasing d. But then we observe a sudden transition to much more complex disconnected lawn shapes. We find several classes of shapes with interesting symmetry properties. We discuss them in detail in our paper. Here is a simulated annealing run for a larger value of d, which produces a sort of three-bladed fan-shaped lawn with little added islands. We began studying the grasshopper problem to try to understand better the difference between quantum theory and classical physics. If you think about measuring the spin of two particles about two random axes with particular states, quantum theory predicts you will get opposite answers more often than any classical model allows. But we don't yet know how big the gap is in general. To understand precisely what classical models do allow, and see how much stronger quantum theory is, you need to solve another version of the grasshopper problem, the lawns defined on a sphere. Having developed and tested our techniques for grasshoppers on the plane, we plan next to use them on the sphere in order to better understand the so-called Bell inequalities, which describe the classical quantum gap. Watch the space. Thank you for listening. You can read more about our work in the paper.